This is part 3 of my Steam library check. Today, we'll be focusing on all games that start with the letter C. All of this video game footage is taken from real Steam Deck hardware. Honestly, this is going to be a really, really long series. Especially if every subsequent letter needs their own part. So this is how things are. Firstly, we'll be testing just the base game. No alternative entries or utilities. If a game doesn't work by default, but we found a workaround for it, we'll let you know what the workaround is. You know, like Proton GE. Secondly, we will be testing delisted titles. I'll tell you if a title's delisted. Thirdly, we won't be testing anti-cheat games that could get my account banned, like Destiny 2. Nextly, we won't test VR titles, or like a title's separate open beta. Thirdly, we'll be looking at games in alphabetical order. Though, in case we run into an entire game series, we'll be looking at that in chronological order. Lastly, this is for entertainment purposes. This is not a definitive test of games. In some cases, I might miss some issues that may happen, especially later on in the game. But if any issues happen while I'm playing the game, I'll be sure to let you guys know what happens. Before we officially begin part C, let's take a look at a game that I totally ignored in the very first part, Ark Survival Evolved. So Ark is actually Steam Deck verified, and I mean the game itself runs at like 30 FPS, a little over 30 FPS actually by default. You could feasibly lower the graphics even more for a more playable frame rate, though honestly, Ark's not that interesting to me. I would have never bought the game, like basically ever, and I got it for free, and honestly, I'm not really sure I enjoy Ark. That's just me though. But hey, the game works. So the first real game on this list is Call of Juarez Gunslinger, and you know what, this game is one hell of a good time, especially if you're into cowboys and stuff. If you're into the cowboy aesthetic, it's pretty fun. Just be sure to turn on Gyro first before you do anything, because Gyro is going to help you a lot in this game. Now go. Be the desperado that you need to be. The next game on our list is Camera Obscura. It's one of those games that's always mystified me how it got into my library. But you know what? It's gonna be my first time exploring this game. And honestly, it doesn't look bad at all. It actually looks pretty nice. And of course, the performance seems to play pretty well too. I mean, why wouldn't it? Wow, that's... That's a lot of lore. I think the game's art style looks pretty good, though the UI is a bit uninspired. Oh, but here's one thing. The game crashes after you try to load into the first level. Man, what a bummer. The next game on this list is Catacomb Kids. I actually played this before this list, and the tutorial would crash the game. I'm not really certain when they fixed this, if the developers fixed it, or if a new version of Proton fixed it, but the tutorial no longer crashes the game. You can actually learn how to play the game now. The game is a roguelike, in more of a literal sense. I mean, yeah, it's still a roguelite, but it's more of a roguelike than most other roguelites. The randomness is an intrinsic element of the game, and honestly, this game is extremely brutal, even by, well, even brutal by roguelike standards. Death is abundant, and honestly, you need to master the mechanics to learn how to play this game. Of course, I've yet to do so, but the game's really fun. The next game is another roguelite, published by the Yogg's cast. Yes, that Yogg's cast. And yeah, this roguelike is a lot more forgiving. It's more it's more similar to Splunky than anything else, really. It's even got multiplayer if you're into that, and it's even got online multiplayer. Well, through a mod that you can download through Steam, believe it or not. Cave Blazers is one heck of a time, and I've played a ton of this game already. Now it's your turn to play this game. The next game on our list is Celeste, and Celeste works on the Steam Deck. There isn't much to say about it, I mean, it's a native Linux game. It's Steam Deck verified, and honestly, it's a really good game. Like, like I played this on my Nintendo Switch, and that was the first place I played this game, and I've beaten it all the way through. And honestly, if you own this game on Steam and you haven't touched it yet, you're doing yourself a disservice. But other than that though, yes, it runs perfectly. The next game on this list is Chasm. Chasm is a Metroidvania infused with roguelike elements. When you make a new game, the world is created. 
and it's randomly generated. Well, not totally randomly generated, it's more randomly assembled. Of course, for the rest of that playthrough, the world will remain the same. It's not a traditional roguelike by any stretch of the imagination. The gameplay itself is modeled very much after Castlevania. The Metroidvania Castlevania games, I mean. Down to the animation cancels as well. I think it's a pretty fun game, though I can't really give a great opinion on this game because I, simply put, haven't played too much of it. I should play more of it. The next game on this list is Chivalry Medieval Warfare. Chivalry is a first person medieval hack and slasher, and it's also multiplayer as well. In fact, I'm pretty sure the game is entirely multiplayer. Now, I could have sworn this game had controller support, but for whatever reason, it's not letting me use controllers. I don't know why. The game is marked as unsupported, but the game works on Steam Deck. You just kind of have to, you know, set controls yourself. It can be a pain, especially if you're learning how to play the game for the first time. As for me though, I've played this game already. I've played this game like a solid... almost 10 years ago. Holy crap, this game is old. The next game on this list is Chroma Squad. Chroma Squad is a turn-based strategy RPG in which you play as five stuntmen doing, well, you play as a studio doing your very own Power Rangers styled show. And the game is pretty fun. I think it's pretty fun, though I have to play it more because honestly, I, <laughs> I haven't played a lot of this game. And it's pretty cool that someone made a Power Rangers based game, though I'm hoping Sabin doesn't sue me. Or Saban? Sabin? Saban? I've heard about how protective they are of Power Rangers. The next game on this list is Cloudpunk. Cloudpunk is a very interesting... Well, it's a delivery simulator. You drive your flying car in a hovering cyberpunk space, and honestly, it's a very breathtaking world. More often than not, you'll be delivering packages from point A to point B, but you'll get to learn a lot about this world, its inhabitants, and ultimately, your role in the world. And yeah, it works on Steam Deck, though at default settings, it's not going to run at 60 FPS. Heck, even at its lowest settings, I don't think it really runs at 60 FPS. It runs at a close 50 or so FPS though. You could feasibly run the Steam Deck at a 40Hz refresh rate, and you'd get a really smooth experience. The next game on our list is Company of Heroes 2. I don't own Company of Heroes 1, by the way. So Company of Heroes 2 doesn't really support controller inputs, being that it's an RTS style game. So you can either download a community configuration or create your own personal configuration. It's a pretty fun game, though ultimately, RTSs aren't really my sort of thing. Condemned Criminal Origins is next, and honestly, it works, but there is a weird issue with this game. See, the game does support controller inputs, but it doesn't seem to support the Steam Deck's controller inputs. I'm not really sure why this would be the case, given that the Steam Deck presents itself as an Xbox 360 controller. But other than this one single issue, I think it works pretty well, the game anyways. But honestly, it's a very stupid issue, and I wish they'd get this straightened out, because it kind of kills my will to play this game. The next game on our list is Confess My Love. Confess My Love is a very cutesy game about confessing your love to a specific girl in the classroom, or so you might think. I'm not really going to say much more about the game story, but you should play it. There's like 20 or so endings. The game is also freeware, so obviously it was a good opportunity to try it out, and the game definitely works. The next game on this list is Conqueror's Blade, and Conqueror's Blade straight up does not work. There's an issue when trying to log into this game, or rather launch it. It says general failure, and Proton GE does not fix this in my experience. On top of the download, it also asks you to update the game, which is about 50 gigs, so honestly I just wasted a bunch of time for no reason. Next on the list was Consortium, and I'm gonna be honest with you, I had no idea what kind of game this was going in. I don't know how this game got into my library. All I know was that I have no idea what this game was all about. I thought it was going to be like an RTS, but it wasn't. It's more like a first person shooter narrative game, so to speak. I'm not really sure how to describe it. I didn't get very far in this game because I had no idea what I was doing. So the game works. The game allegedly supports controller, but for whatever reason, it has the same issue that Condemned Criminal Origins has in that it doesn't recognize the Steam Deck as a controller. Honestly, I don't really know what the fix is for that. But if you're comfortable with playing keyboard and mouse controls, by all means. And this is Copy Kitty. Copy Kitty seems to work on Steam Deck. It's a pretty fun run and gun shooter. 
It's one very bombastic game, and honestly, it can be hard to keep track of if you're not familiar with the game itself. Unfortunately though, the game doesn't seem to work after the tutorial stage. I'll show you what I mean. After selecting the only level I can actually play, the game just like, hard freezes. And I mean, the game does deserve its unplayable status if it's really gonna be like this. Kinda sad honestly, but it's whatever I guess. The next game makes me even sadder, Cortex Command. Cortex Command is an awesome game that no longer gets active development because the developers have moved on. You can mod this game and honestly it's amazing. You want to know what the main problem with this game is on Steam Deck? That's right, controller support. For whatever reason the right stick does not seem to work and I have no idea why that could be the case. That said, the game is open source now and there is a native Linux port that you could download on GitHub, but that's out of the scope of this video. We'll have to make a different video about that later, perhaps. Yes, the entire Counter-Strike franchise runs. This is Counter-Strike 1.6, but Condition Zero and Condition Zero deleted scenes work as well. Counter-Strike Source also runs as well, but the one CS game people really want to know about is CSGO. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm out of my element when it comes to CS, so I'm not playing with real players, I'm playing with bots, but you can play with real players as well. Unfortunately, every time I launch CSGO, I just go full game journalist mode, so I'm totally unable to play the game the way it's meant to be played, skillfully, and with grace. But hey, CSGO runs, I mean, there was no surprise there, it's a Valve game, would you expect, right? Crazy Taxi works, I'm not good at this game whatsoever, so you're not going to hear me say much about this game, except that it works on Steam Deck. The next game on our list is Craftopia, and Craftopia is a very janky game from Japan. It's basically more or less a survival, crafting survival game, and honestly it's kind of fun. There's a lot of neat ideas in this game. It's definitely not more than the sum of its parts, but it's hard to really, like, really dislike. And yes, it also works on Steam Deck. A lot of people seem to claim that this game doesn't get updates, but literally I'm looking at the change logs and it got an update like maybe like a week ago. And I mean, I don't play the game a lot, but I'm not really sure where these people are coming from. But the game seems fun, and the multiplayer. The multiplayer, I haven't tried it out yet, but I think we might try that out in the future. Nudge nudge wink wink. The next game on this list is Crimson Clover World Ignition. It's yet another bullet hell game that I don't even know if it has a story and I'm pretty sure it doesn't have a story, but you know what, it doesn't matter. The point is this game is a great time. The game is pretty difficult, especially if you want to play it at its normal difficulty. And you know what, that's perfectly fine by me. I like a challenge. And you know what, if you like power fantasies, if you like just feeling awesome, you just like blowing everything up, this game is for you, especially if you're the type that likes these shooter mods but you don't like bullet hell because you like get immediately wrecked, you'll like this game. Yeah, I mean, you'll still get wrecked, but I mean, I think you'll have a good time getting wrecked. Unfortunately, I don't own the updated re-release, Crimson Clover World Explosion, but supposedly that runs on Steam Deck. It has a playable verification and honestly, I don't see why it wouldn't run. The next game on our list is Chris Tales and Chris Tales finally works. The cutscenes finally load. They fixed it. I don't know how long it took for them to fix it or when they fixed it, but they did. I know for a fact that I was the first one to report this on their Discord server, so I'm glad they fixed it. I don't know if they listened to me or not, but whatever. I really like the art style of this game, and the combat, it's pretty decent. I haven't gotten very far though. I do genuinely think that the best part of this game was without a doubt the cutscenes, the animated cutscenes. The fact that it used to not work really killed my mood to play this game, but now that it works, now I can actually play the game the way it was meant to be played. Fully working. That said, I don't know if the epic version of the game works, so yeah, you know. I played a ton of CrossCode back when it was like early access, and honestly, I think it was a good time for me to actually play the game for once. Like, the full game in its release. Play the game. I promise you'll have a great time. And yes, CrossCode does work on Steam Deck full controller support and all, but I think the one caveat I have with the game is that the game seems to not run at a consistent 60 FPS. It'll dip every now and then, and for the most part it runs at 60, but I think I think that, especially for a game like this that's so action oriented, I think running it at a smooth 60 FPS is the main priority here. But you know, other than that though, it works really well too. The next game on this list is Crypt of the Necrodancer, and Crypt of the Necrodancer actually released an update supporting Steam input. 
Necro Dancer is an amazing game, but it's also an amazingly difficult game, especially if you're the kind of person that's not into rhythm games. I mean, I play a lot of rhythm games myself, but you know. But being a pseudo rhythm game on top of being an already hard roguelike game is another like it's another can of worms. It's a it's it's how do I describe? It? It's very difficult, but it works on Steam Deck, and I know that's why y'all are here. And here we are, Cuphead, aka the main proof that I'm better than your average game journalist. As you can see here, I'm just playing through the tutorial. It's not hard to understand. That's not a hard concept to understand. You know what else isn't a hard concept? Jumping and then dashing at the right time to make it across a gap. Now, I'd be lying if I said I was good at the game though, but I can tell you that I can play the game pretty well. And it's fun. And it works on Steam Deck. I mean, what more do you need, right? So what did we learn today? We learned that more than a few games seem to have issues with controller support, despite the fact that the games themselves seem to support controller. Games like Chivalry, Condemned, Consortium, Cortex Command. It seems like it's a running theme with these games, and honestly, it, you know, despite the fact that I could use Steam input to remedy this issue and just map the game controls yourself, I don't want to have to resort to that for games that should have controller support, that definitely do have controller support. That said, it's not like any of those games are going to get active development, so like, you know, I don't think this will ever be fixed per se, unless Valve has a way to fix it on their end. I mean, Cortex Command might have a chance. I mean, there is an open source Linux port that's available, but that's kind of out of the scope of this video, but I'm willing to check it out. They also should fix Copy Kitty as well. I want to play that. The next part's going to be Utter Madness. If you like high tech low life, you should subscribe and check out my other videos. In fact, if you like high tech low life, you should check out my Discord server in the description down below. It's one heck of a good time, and I know you'll like it. 